The Dacia Jogger has been a huge hit. Introduced in 2022, it is priced at thousands lower than the average family hatchback, and this compact seven-seat estate offers a huge amount of space, practicality and plain common sense for the money. Until now, the Jogger has been available with a cheery one-litre three-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. But now you can get it with this new hybrid powertrain, and it is actually quite really quite interesting tech. So you've got a standard 1.6-litre petrol four-cylinder non-turbocharged petrol engine, uh, and within that, there is a four-speed automatic gearbox that's got an integrated small electric motor, plus there is another bigger electric motor that can drive the front wheels directly. So basically, in this affordable front-wheel drive hybrid family car, there is real Formula One technology. The result is a car that manages 112 grams per kilometre and 57 mpg in government WLTP tests, compared with 130 grams and 49 mpg for the standard non-hybrid jogger. But there is a price to all this tech because the Jogger Hybrid starts at £23,000, which is some £3,400 more than the equivalent non-hybrid. Although PCP Finance deals peg a mid-spec hybrid at £285 per month, compared with just £245 for the non-hybrid. Yes, it's a bigger final balloon payment for the hybrid, but that's still pretty impressive and not a huge difference in price. That is loads of money when you're talking about a car that lives or dies on its sort of budget appeal. But it is also a significant improvement in economy. Uh, and of course, if you spend a lot of time around town, then you might even see an even bigger disparity between the standard one litre petrol and this hybrid model. Not only that, but of course, because it's got the lower CO2 emissions, when it comes to benefit in kind tax for company car users, you could actually see, well, benefit in kind comes in at much the same amount. So you could have a much more efficient car for the same amount of money. So there are lots of reasons why you might go for the hybrid, but Main reason is, of course, economy. So we'll go out and we'll have a drive and we'll see how it does in the real world in just a minute. But before that, let's have a recap on the amazing, utilitarian, practical Dacia Jogger. The Jogger is a seven seat estate as standard. And while the rearmost seats don't fold into the boot neatly like they do in your typical, if much more expensive seven seater, they do come out completely to leave a vast boot space. The middle row splits 60-40 and topples forward. It's not sophisticated, but blimey, it is practical and there's plenty of room for a couple of adults or a couple of chunky car seats in the middle row too. It's all much the same in here as it is in the standard jogger. The only thing the hybrid gets is a bespoke readout up here, which shows you your battery charge and what power source you're running on, that kind of thing. Other than that, you can only get the hybrid in the two higher specifications. And that means that in the mid-spec expression, uh, you get your climate control, cruise control, automatic lights and wipers, front and rear parking sensors, everything you want really, plus this eight inch touchscreen, which has got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, DAB, Bluetooth. Really, what more do you need? But if you do want more than that, you can go for the top spec extreme and that gets alloy wheels, heated seats, and also a few extra safety bits, including uh, autonomous emergency braking and blind spot. Ultimately, I actually really quite like it in here. Visibility is pretty good. Um, I even quite like the sort of texture of this textile on the doors. I don't think you're going to be disappointed at all, especially at the price of the Jogger. For our test drive here, I've looped around a route that runs through a really busy village, high street and surrounding roads, with a mile or two of 40 mile per hour roads, a bit of national limit, and then back into town again. Well, it's not scientific, driving around this little loop uh, will give us some idea of what kind of economy you'll get and also how much time the jogger will spend on electric running when you're in fairly varied conditions. And I think one of the things I like most about it is that it does spend a lot of time in electric mode. I mean, I'm doing 30 miles an hour now with a bit of load on the throttle and it's still in EV mode. So it's pretty good. And because that little electric motor that's in the gearbox functions as a sort of starter motor, it starts on electric power all the time. So when you pull away from a standstill, it will always be on electric power for a few moments at least. Without getting into incredibly tedious and complicated technicalities, it is quite different to most other full hybrid systems. So Renault or Dacia have put a lot of effort into this powertrain and it, it has resulted in, I think, quite an impressive system. So in this kind of driving, stop start, it's nice and smooth. You can feel the switch between electric and petrol, but you know, it's doing okay, I think. It's quite pleasant to drive, actually. It's quite nice and quiet on electric power. It's great. My big issue is that 1.6 petrol engine. The hybrid bit, fine. 
but I just think the 1.6 petrol engine is a bit noisy and coarse. But the hybrid system I think is quite clever and most importantly it is spending a lot of time on electric power alone. And if you're looking at the details of the Jogger Hybrid on the website and notice that it's only a four-speed automatic gearbox, don't panic. Again, it's a fiendishly complicated setup, but the F1 inspired wizardry means that you're still keeping quite low revs at 70 miles per hour. It rides nicely too, it's pretty comfortable, you do get quite a bit of suspension noise, steering, a bit vague, who cares really? It goes in the direction you point it, it feels perfectly sort of confident, stable enough, it's exactly what you want. It's just not a car that you buy because you think it drives brilliantly, is it? Let's face it, so it just does the job really well and I like that about it. A word on safety, the jogger was crash tested in 2021 by Euro NCAP and it got one star out of five. No matter how you pull that apart, <laughs> that's quite disappointing, isn't it? But I would like to make the point that largely the reason it got such a bad result is because of the electronic driver aids that it didn't have or doesn't have on the entry level model. It does have a lot of those driver aids on the top spec and even some of them are even on the mid spec version that we've got here. So ultimately the crash structure in the jogger actually didn't do too badly in the tests. Certainly not the best in class, but not terrible. I think, in truth, think of it as being comparable in terms of its crash safety to a used car of, you know, five to eight years ago, something like that, which is probably what a lot of people will be comparing it to on price. And you're about spot on. And most importantly, we are seeing pretty good economy. With eco drive mode switched on, well over half of our test loop was covered on electric power alone, and that resulted in economy of 51.7 mpg overall. I'd add that this was only a short route and the economy was over 54 mpg and creeping up quite quickly in town before falling on faster roads. So if you spend a lot of time in traffic, this system could work brilliantly well. So there you have it. The efficient, likeable and ruthlessly utilitarian <laughs> Jogger Hybrid. I just like the fact that it's so honest, straightforward and great value. And I mean, we really need cars like that right now on the new car market, don't we? I think it's pretty crucial that they're out there. Personally, I think I might actually go for the standard one litre uh, just because I do quite high mileage and I think that that would be fine for me. But I can absolutely see why a lot of people who might spend most of the time in town or maybe a company car driver, there are loads of reasons why I think it's great that the hybrid's offered and it is a really interesting and very effective system. But if you do a lot of shorter urban journeys and need a car that's basically a van when you need it to be, the Jogger Hybrid is just great. And regardless of which engine you might go for in the Jogger, there's really nothing else out there like it. Don't forget to head to cargurus.co.uk for a whole host of fantastic used cars. And while you're here, please do like the video, subscribe to the Cargurus UK YouTube channel and turn your notifications on so that you don't miss any of our videos.